Good evening and welcome to this week's edition of Gaelic Weekly Live. Tonight we're joined by current Throne star Rona McNabb. We'll be looking back at all the action from the weekend and looking ahead to next week's championship action in the qualifiers and the mainstream. As always I'm joined by Barry, Jib and Marty. Lads are well. Hello, right. Good evening. Good evening. Right. Barry, welcome back to the sofa. Thanks very much. We Good missed you back. last week. I'm sure you did. You just had an uglier version of a Barry last week. We had another, <laughs> we had another Barry. We had a big, we had a big Barry in last week. We had a big Barry. Week. Week. We had a big Barry yeah. Yeah. Barry's back now. Yeah. Um, we Barry's back with his wee t-shirts. <laughs> <laughs> we Barry's back with his wee t-shirts. But no, we look good to have you back. Jib, you're a happy man. Yeah, Toronto indeed. winning yesterday. It was a good game. Good weekend. Good weekend, Jib. A couple of ones taken after it as well. Great. Some yeah. great you're day. feeling fresh enough. Definitely, always am. Good. <laughs> Good. Uh, social media tonight then, Jib. Yes. What are we going to run with? On oh, my new iPod, by the way, as well. Huge. Thank you. <laughs> what about the iPod? <laughs> <laughs> um, taking league and championship form into consideration, who would you rank as the top three teams in Ireland at the minute? Okay, so league and championship. Yeah. Main. Who would you rank, folks, as the, the best in Ireland at the moment, top three? Yeah, let us know your views. I'd say there'll be. Uh, I'd say we guess two of them anyway. Yeah, the top two is going to be fairly yeah. straight away. Kerry well, yeah, Dublin. Yeah, to, to the top two, like Kerry yeah. and Dublin, really. Kerry and Dublin. Yeah. 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 John Heston was in attacking form, putting Westmeath two points to no score in front after three minutes. Offley levelled the game before Kieran Martin, who scored 1-2 on the day, got in the end of a Paul Sherry pass to leave the Lake County three points to two in front after ten minutes. The direct long ball paid dividends for Westmeath as Callum McCormick wearing number 23, but who started the game, found John Heston, who duly put three points between the sides, five points to two and nearing the 15-minute mark. Offaly were living off scraps and Westmead found it difficult to break away from their challenge. A patient build-up led to this fine score from Michael Brazel in the 30th minute to leave two points between the teams. Westmead, however, would finish the half stronger with Paul Shari, who orchestrated the attack, scoring the last two points. One from a 45 and this shot after good interplay with John Hessler. This gave Westmead a four-point cushion going into the half-time break. Offley changed tactics for the second half, committing fully to attack, with Peter Cunningham the scorer of four points, getting the faithful county on the scoreboard within a minute of the restart. John Heston and Nigel Dunn traded frees, but then sub John Egan got on the end of a pass from Kieran Martin. It put them 113 to 11 points in front, approaching the 50-minute mark. In discipline would prove costly once more for Offley, with Keane Donoghue receiving his marching orders for his second yellow in the 58th minute. Westmeath exploited the space in defence with Paul Sharry linking up once more with the immense John Heslin who scored this fine goal to bring his tally to 1-6. A minute later Heslin was again involved, unselfishly passing the ball to Kieran Martin who made no mistake. Westmeath marched on to a Leinster semi-final date with Dublin while Offaly meet Cavan in the qualifiers. Final score Westmeath 3-17, Offaly 5 OK, so a comfortable victory for Westmeath there at 3-17 to... 15 points. Uh, Mr. Heslin and Mr. Egan and Co. stepping up again. Yeah, the big names step up to the four. Uh, Kieran Martin, John Egan, John Heslin getting goals and Heslin kicking 1 6. I think Kieran Martin got 1 2. Yeah. It was a, what we expected to happen the week before, you know, their, their affair the week before, 10 all. And then this week, the, both teams seem to have opened up a bit. Massive score in 3 17, 15 points. And uh, Westmead's main men, you know, came to the fore and, and really showed the quality, which we probably would have expected to happen last week. But we, I, we, we expect that, we come to expect that with Westmeath. I mean, mm. you know, when you when you have that good, I suppose, an attack, Barry, why, why are they not doing more? But they have been two Leinster finals, as you remember. Recently, um, I suppose you have to look at the, the other end of the pitch for you, obviously where there are Achilles heaters, just in the defensive side of things. Um, now you have to say Paul Shari, yes, he was outstanding as well. And mm -hmm. shows you the difference in the week in terms of the, the conditions. Um, the Westmead manager said yes. You know they didn't get to play as fluent as they would have wanted the previous week, and it was a it was a dire affair by all reports. You know, between the two teams, very cagey. 
And this week it was just a case of, you know, boys were fit to play the way yeah. they wanted. John Hazen, like we said, kicked one six. Paul Sharry was feeding the inside four lane with superb balls and likes of John Egan standing up and being counted for as well. But it's just Did the weather play a factor in that? Ah big time, like you So know, is that is that this might sound very simplistic, but is that a reason why in the league they have tailed off? I don't think it's they they, they they have shown that they in patches that they, they've got good players but cohesively as a team like they just they're just probably not there. They probably shouldn't be down in division four now, but I wouldn't think to say, like to say that because the weather's bad during the league the West Mead are suffering, you know. <laughs> but, <laughs> I didn't say the weather was bad. <laughs> <laughs> well it's case like you know, we have to take into consideration as well, like, you know, with three years ago they were a division one team. Yeah. And the three relegations yeah, back to back, you know. So, you know, it's a case of I don't think a lot of players actually left the team. I don't know what the what the, the obviously we, we spoke of before the yeah. Westmead County Board had a lot of faith with them, the manager, like and just kind of bearing that now. We said they two, they were involved in that the two last fans the last yeah. three years, so they were they've obviously got promoted from division four, like and we we we've said week on week, even within the league, they're the top scorers within the mm-hmm. national league as a team and the serious firepower and there are a lot of ways, you know, who would be hard to handle for any full back lane within Definitely, the country, yeah, you know, yeah, such yeah, and it's just it's just a case of you know, like they've had Dublin twice in in the, the Leinster finals. Obviously, Dublin's came out on top, and then within um, the qualifiers, they, they haven't had a, you know an easier fixture yeah. for them to get by. You know, and they they, they struggle in that end now. Just depends, like the, realistically, you know, D- Dublin will probably come out on top next week. Whenever Westmead only have a week to prepare for yeah, it as well, so, you know, which is yeah, a bit unfair. It, 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 you can see the, the power they have in the full forward lane with Heslin and Kieran Martin. There, there's a couple yeah. of balls kicked in, and, and it was it was too. Two on one, two off the defenders, the one West Mead defender, and just an oh, attacker. And you know, there's just the power that those two lads have. You know, it's, it's, I know it's Pat, Pat Flanagan said at the, at the end of the game, he was just saying, you know, it, it came down to them look, chasing the game really near the end of it. And you know, it was obviously going to leave them exposed yeah. as well. As the you fast, said, the fast it was like, well, so, I mean, then back to me, two weeks in a row, non existent. Like. Mm. Yeah, yeah, well, that's it. Him won the best four yeah. down about Leinster League, you know, and it's just it, here, it's, it's bearing very well for West Mead at the minute. Like, you know, unfortunately, they're coming across uh, the best team in the country, in my opinion, now next it's weekend. Really, yeah. and, uh, Again, just I suppose it's, it, it's how lucky they get in the, the qualifier draws, like you know, because they, they definitely could go on a bit of a run, like, but it, it just depends, you know, what sort of confidence they take out of next week. Okay, well, look, the, the march on, but still a test to come then. Mm-hmm. All right, next up we have Mead and Kildare, uh, hotly anticipated game last week by the panel. We have a clip of that for the folks at home, so party if you should. Referee Joe McQuillan gets this Leinster senior football semi final underway, a huge prize, a Leinster final appearance on the 16th of July, and it's Mead coming forward and a chance for the first score of the game. And what a start for the men from Mead with James Tower giving them the lead inside the first 20 seconds. Start for Mead. Great atmosphere in Tullamore, perfect conditions. Cribbit. Nice little jink, good run from Keith Cribbett, and a fine ball inside. Here's Cahal McAnally, and that's Kildare's first score of the game, and it's come from Cahal McAnally, well created by Keith Cribbett, and the scores. Waiting for the run of Lyons, Oli Lyons, a great man for joining the attack. Chance now here for Daniel Flynn, and that's the score of the game so far. Strong running, good support play, and... Conway. David Highland gets it forward. That's a 50 50 ball, but it might work out well. Chance here for McNally. That's a good save, but it's gone inside. And McNally has started this game superbly. He scored 1 2 despite Paddy O'Rourke's best efforts. Wasn't able to keep out the effort from McNally. And four points now. The difference. Great catch by McNally. Waited until O'Rourke came out and struck it low, and it went over the line. Ronan Jones under pressure. Foul though. But not enough movement inside. Again, the ball. Well, won by Brian McMahon. And he had to work really hard to get possession up there on his own. McMahon out to Jack but James McEntee, the substitute. Donald Lenehan. He's managed one point from play already. And that's his second. Lovely score from Donald Lenehan. Looking for a runner. Seemed to be held back. Here's Brophy. Oh, that's a great score from Paddy Brophy. Showed lots of hunger to drive forward in the first half. That's a very good ball inside. Now a bit of pace shown here by the substitute, Rory O'Cullon. Oh, what a wonderful point from Rory O'Cullon. 
That's three points in a row now for me. McEntee to O'Sullivan. Just lost it, Killian O'Sullivan. Lucky to get a second bite of the cherry as Brian Menton drives forward. Here's O'Cullon. O'Cullon's effort is high and is accurate. What an impact Rory O'Cullon has had in the opening six minutes of the... Sullivan waited and he shouldn't have and Owen Doyle was in ahead of him. Good play by the Kildare captain and a great ball to Flynn. Oh, and that's a great score by Daniel Flynn. Quick. Back to Brian Menton who has already got a... Now will it open it up for a second attempt from him into O'Sullivan. Back to Menton. Now we'll have a crack. And Brian Menton has got another. And the gap is down to five. Ball inside. Oh, that's good pace shown here by David Slattery. Should be a score at the end. Gets the ball inside. And can Kildare finish with a goal? Yes, they can. And it's Daniel Flynn. Superbly worked goal. David Slattery involved. Finished by Daniel Flynn. And that is surely that. And it opened up inside. And Flynn having the ball home. So Kildare with an easy victory in the end, up 216 to 13 points, lads. A, a surprise. Uh, we, we thought it'd be a lot closer. Yeah, we, we thought it'd be tighter now. In fairness, we both. Uh, well, I said that we was going to win it there last mm -hmm. week, but in fairness, Kildare showed that they were made the wrong call. Yeah, for yeah, me. Well, <laughs> finally. Um, <laughs> don't forget, Kildare. Kildare were uh, were good. They were they're, they're powerful outfit, like in the, uh, the middle of the field. There, they're strong, good looking, uh, uh, feely in, in yeah. the midfield, and the, the full forward line was. In fairness, they did get too much room there, but uh, there's quality in there when uh, Flynn and McNally in there, and then uh, uh, Kelly at an half order. Yeah. You, know, they're, they're you good, mentioned they're Feely. Up. Feely's actually a full back come midfielder, and now he takes frees on both sides. Like yourself. Maybe not the frees, but. Uh, <laughs> You're getting no, but that's, I mean, anyway. that's, that's, that's seriously impressive. I mean, yeah. he had four or five points the other day, too. Yeah, both it's, feet, that's yeah it's seriously. He's been like, yeah. like we were saying, but like John has the way you can take both sided free kicks. But like I thought, especially within the first half, like we, we said it was where a lot of puns were saying that it was going to be a very traditional style of game. So as mm -hmm. you know, between the two teams, and it turned out that way, it just. Mm -hmm. It showed that Kildare was fit to do it a bit better. I thought I, I thought me were very naive within the first 15, 20 minutes of, of the game. They just they realistically just let the full forward line for Kildare yeah. have 20, 30 metres in the, the win ball. And with this pace of like Daniel Flynn and Cal McNally, you can't yeah. do that. And then the likes of Paddy Brophy, you can switch it up and put in long yeah. balls as well. You know, and they yeah. done, done very well. Like, it was tradition to an extent, like, but Kildare's system was, was in place and it was a better mm -hmm. system. Like, I think systematically they were better. Physically, they look better. Yeah, they, they, yeah, they they're strong. Mm -hmm. strong Actually, team. I read I read an interview with um, their fullback Highland, and he was saying that a lot of their work this year was on their defensive tackling, getting mm -hmm. in the zones, and working on their tackling. Like they spent serious amount of time this year on yeah. that, and it was shown. Yeah. Like some of the turnovers they got there, like I know I <coughs> talked a lot about the Sullivan this year with his Pearson ones that he does through the middle. Mm -hmm. He trained it maybe three, four, five times, and every occasion yeah, he, he was met proper, solid. Yeah. So he was, yeah. you know, and there was dispossessed and. It's you know it's testing to Keane O'Neill as well. That's yeah. that's this is his third year now with them, and he's they're really really progressing yeah, yeah. well. You know under him, and they're 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 the closest team to the Dubs down in Leinster at the minute. Like and um, if, as we think, if the Dub if the Dubs get over Westmead yeah, yeah. next week, it could Make be a very very good final. final like, yeah. Yeah. I think he kind of fell into a wee trap there. Was, I don't know what was going on. There was a lot of talk about me there. You know they kind of they're they're generally kind of a. A copy kind of a county anyway, you know, and I think that there may be just a bit of head scratching for them now, you know, they've got a bit of a superiority complex over a few teams right down there, but uh, mm -hmm. they'll, they'll have to go back to the drawing board again because they're yeah. not there yet, you know. Yeah, there was a lot of talk about them, which, I, I don't know, I, I find it a bit strange because in Division 2 at the end of the day, you know, Kildare and Galway seem to be quite... Quite a bit ahead of everyone else. Yeah. Meads, Meads was a bit like last year as well in the league. They, they kind of came late into it. You know, they started to the, the rack up points kind of later on in, in, mm -hmm. in the year, more so than the dirty parts. Now, I don't know whether they were doing a lot of heavy training and that was kind of testament to that, or, you know, they were just kind of getting better with their system, just generally kind of getting more fluid or whatever. But it was kind of a wee bit similar this year as well. They were putting up yeah. serious, serious scores in the last two or three games of the league yeah. in Division 2. But I suppose, you know, with Andy, Andy McIntyre, as we said, like he likes playing, you know, fifteen on fifteen, and he th mm. he obviously thought with the way they were playing, they were they were well capable of putting it up to, mm. to to me. But like you know, when you look at the athleticism and the power and the strength that this this Kildare team has, oh. it's it's it's, yeah. it's savage. Like so, it yeah. is really really is. You know, second half the one five kickers in a row, some clean kits. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Destroyed the kit. 
made kickers completely. And yeah. it's not, it's, it's, it's just it's the running power. Like you, the yeah. likes of Ollie Lane's yeah. there, you know, Severn Hames coming from the full back lane into the yeah, up into the half forward yeah. lane. They're always off, offering overlaps. If it's not one, it's two, three, four boys offering overlaps just for and then just popping it in a simple score. Like it was, mm-hmm. it was brilliant. Yeah, three, three, three boys were former professionals as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Feely, Daniel Flynn, Paddy yeah. Brophy. Yeah. Brophy's just back. Brophy's only yeah. back. Like, yeah. he, he kicked, yeah. kicked two great points. I was actually surprised yeah. to see yeah. that he was in. I was very surprised with that there. Because, yeah. you know, that can, that can, you know, when you see why he's in all year, like, and, you know, mm-hmm. playing well and they've got promoted and you see why he's coming back, you think, geez, yeah. that might have a negative effect. Obviously not. Yeah, yeah, we'll just come back from injury as well, and that'll be a fourth professional. Yeah, well, four professionals even in around the team. That's strange. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It it shows that there's, there's there's good there's good uh, conveyor belt of talent coming out of there. Yeah. Like probably okay, reasonable well, population there, and we'd be looking forward then to them up against what we think will be the Dubs. Yeah, so that, that'll be something to look forward to. Over over west to Roscommon Leitrim, uh, two twenty three to one nine in favour of Roscommon. Marty obviously have tipped them. Um, a solid performance ah, or yeah. didn't take much think, from it? No, um, I think that's it that started well. Uh Leitrim maybe got a goal uh, against the run of play to, to bring it back um to within a couple of points, but Ruscommon never looked never looked jaded and uh, even um uh, Donny Smith got a black card early on as well, which maybe against strong opposition would would po- possibly be a blow to Ruscommon, but it didn't make any difference. Yes, they were far superior team. Uh, like, and, you know. and, and the Smith was superb as well. Yeah. Midfield. It's, it's really a position season. He's been normally classed as like a half forward wing forward, yeah, but yeah. midfield that is running power. It's rangy and he's, yeah, got, he's, he's very, very, very good yes, running the ball. And yeah. even Kevin McSay said after the game, you know, they, they had their set, their sights set on the Connacht final. Like, you know, he mm-hmm. wasn't being disrespectful to Leitrim, but he like he's he's been looking now to the yeah. to the Connacht final since you know they were drawn in the semi final realistically because they knew they were going to yeah. get London or Leitrim. Well, they've had a long time to think about it. They had a twelve week layoff, yeah. but they were got relegated after you know halfway through mm-hmm. the league as well. Yeah. So like you know they've had a very long time to think about it. You know, so well, well, they're, they're they're fairness, they were good. Yeah. Like it was good. You know, I know there's a lot of boys that haven't made themselves available, but you know, with mm-hmm. that, when you have that kind of league that you had, and then you have that sort of layoff, you'd expect a lot of boys to lead the panel. But you know, the panel stuck together. Like, and you know, as you said, like you know, they were going to be guaranteed more or less to get into the yeah. panel final, and then yeah. whether they win that or lose that, they still have a very good chance of long summer. Like, so Galway, Galway up next would be the real asset test, I suppose. Galway. Sometimes we find in in uh, Connacht that there is mm. a lot of yeah, maybe yeah. easier games. So. Yeah. Scotland has had no fear of Galway, like yeah, ball, the, the, it'll, I think it's Galway in Salt Hill, which mm. will be uh, a bit of a of a drawback for Scotland. But mm. in fairness, for Scotland have, have have been probably until this year have, have probably been showing better than than Galway. Up until last year, the drawing game was a disappointment for both teams. Was, yeah. was there and then Galway really yeah. put them to the sword in the second match. But you know, for Scotland have been thinking about that for a long time, as we say, and it'll make for. An interesting, interesting uh, an interesting be, final, yeah. We'll be hoping for a uh, common win, of course, Marnie, after your yeah, second. Yeah, yeah. Of course. We'll see, we'll see. You know, I think it's, it's the same thing. Galway would probably be, <laughs> Galway would still probably be considered favourites, you know, from most people. Like, the, yeah. you know, putting Mayo uh, of to the sword uh, last week and then being yeah, current champions and that as well. Okay. Yeah. But we'll look, uh, up north next, but before we go north, folks, if you just take a look behind me, there are is a new top uh, from Masita that they've, they've kindly donated to us, which will be given away over the next couple of weeks. Jib will be... What club is that right? That's St. Regina's, Jib. Regina's? R-G-I-N-A. Right. St. Regina. Regina's in Canada, Jib. So, uh, well, you it's, it's, it's another lovely top from Masita, so very nice, keep an eye out for yeah. the social Roy, media man. Roy thought you pronounced it Regina. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jib. <laughs> He's got Regina on the brain. Without <laughs> <laughs> further ado, we, uh, we shoot up north to Ulster where Thoreau took on Donegal. Sean Kavanagh finally getting his hands on the ball here, getting the mark as well. Back towards his brother Colm. And Colm was 29, advancing, looking for a support player, getting it there. Hitting it on the run and hitting it over the bar. It's a really good point. Nicely done by David Mulgrew, the 19-year-old from Ardbow, who was up in support, and Tyrone get their opening score in the 8th minute. 2-1. It's perfect conditions. Not an awful lot of breeze around as Tierney McCann gets his hands on the ball. Back as far as Kieran McGeary. Over at that spot where he got a late, late point in last year's Ulster final. Maddie Donnelly again. Player from Trillick. Curling this one, trying to put a bit of shape on it. Looks good enough. Looks very good. And really hit it brilliantly and confidently. So good.
recovery by Tyrone. This is Owen Bond Gallagher. Eventually the ball kicked in and over the bar. Brilliantly done. Super point and it's McCreary who took the pass from Gallagher. Martin Riley with McGinley back up there with Kieran Thompson. Finally it's kicked and Murphy looks at it and watches it admiringly as it sails over the crossbar and Michael Murphy's got it back to Niall Snodden. Well, there was a possible goal chance there a moment ago when that ball was being built up. Sean Cavada was in a clear position, but they never fed him. This time it's Tiernan and McCann. McCann could take a point and does. And an UUJ student towards Pori Campsie, scorer of two points, back to McNamee again. From the 45-metre line, approaching Donegal's defence is Tiernan McCann being urged to go on and on and on, and he does, half hits it, and somehow it goes in! Wasn't the cleanest of contact, didn't have to be, it's his first ever championship goal, and it comes after 38 minutes, and what a mountain Donegal have to climb at this stage, it looks beyond them! McBriarty looking for an immediate response. They need something. They haven't scored since that 23rd minute. They go one here. A third point for Paddy McBriarty. Another good burst forward. Paddy Donnelly onto his left. Watches it. Plenty of elevation. The necessary accuracy as well. He's happy. He's got it. Off once again to Michael Henney. Back once more to Carroll. Then laid off to Michael Langham. And there is a goal, finally buried in the back of that Tyrone net. Joy, eventually it was uh, worth the wait if you happened to be Michael Carroll. Michael Langan initially, and then that ball just delivered deep into the back of the Tyrone net. Back in as far as McShane, taking on Lacey. Back to Robin O'Neill, he's got one. Sludden has got three. Gets better and better and better. It's all over. It is uh, victory in the end for Mickey Hart's Tyrone. Okay, so Tyrone with a victory over near neighbours Donegal, 121 to 112. I think we all thought it'd be a lot tighter, Barry. Yep, well I tipped on a goal for Ulster and that's another win for Barry. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, in fairness, I thought, I said last week, I thought Tyrone to beat them, but I don't think you know, nobody saw it expecting this year. We were all yeah. expecting something similar to what last year was, you know, it was going to be a cagey yeah, tight yeah. affair in, in Clonus again, and it's just, it, to, to be fair, for 20 minutes it was, it was like point for point, and then, geez, yeah, the last, the last, the five all, yeah, the and one. then the last 10 minutes just Tyrone completely took out, like a lot of ones were saying now that, it was a fitness thing or something like that there, and I, I don't I don't buy that there. Like you know, Rory no, Gallagher's not going to have his team prepared I, I, I for. I, I, it, I didn't know. expect it to be as cagey as, as last year. The, the Donegal have, have changed a bit. They've gone here. There's mm. more more running game, mm. and they're they're not as as tight as they were defensively. Like I said last week, Antrim got in should have had two goals in the first half against them. Uh, Tyrone yes, they should have had two goals in the first half against them, and. They're just, they're not where they were. They're, they've brought in a lot of new players and we give them a lot of credit for the great league campaign that they had and that, that doesn't that doesn't change at all. Yeah. But the, like the Ulster Championship is, is slightly for different now. And, yeah. um, they just, like uh, Murphy was, was, was drowned out in the middle, McBurdy was drowned out and after that, you know, they're just kind of crying out for a couple more leaders to st step up to the plate. McGee was nowhere to be, nowhere to be seen, you know, and... Um, Donegal's leaders didn't show it. Lynn, McGee went you know, off, Lynn went off. But McGee must have most off because he had an injury because he looked like he was going well and then all of a sudden he was taken off, you know, so... There wasn't even the same, you know, I suppose... Aggressive. Intensity or aggressiveness yeah. that we well, expect fairness, in that game, but from Donegal... I have to say, the drone were very smart in the way they played. Like, you know, they, they were completely dictating the tempo of the game. Like, you know, yeah. whenever they needed to slow it down around the middle of the field because they knew Donegal were mm -hmm. dropping back, they were just keeping ball. And then... It's their, it's, their, it's their speed of the way they can go through the phases, you yeah, know, yeah. And through the areas of the pitch. Like, and they also had, they also had an overlapping run. They, they, yeah. didn't, they didn't really, you know, stretch the game over. It wasn't that they had a wild amount of width or something like that there. It's just it, in case they had just a very it's strong just, runner coming straight yeah, off yeah, the shoulder. They the ball in as well. The speed, yeah, they, the yeah. speed with which they, 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 turned it, they turned over after Donegal either got a turned over or else hit the ball wide. Like, or he couldn't keep up with them on a few occasions. Shocking. Like, it was... 
it was just the ball was there and Morgan had it and then they, they brought something back which is something great to see we haven't seen in a while it's long kick outs yeah. and they like he over passed over the whole midfield a couple of occasions Sean Cavanagh should have had a goal mm-hmm. it was a long ball from uh, Morgan straight out to Collie Cavanagh he caught it and fed it in and Sean Cavanagh maybe should have slipped it or, or should have hit it to either side of the goalie like, and it was just it was great to see that there being brought back because a lot of teams have got obsessed with these short kick outs and, and short quick kick outs yeah. but it, Short long kick outs a lot better, or a quick long kick outs a lot better, you know. Mm-hmm. Don't they all got that on themselves? Don't they all actually the man in the stand with a bag of balls? I throw it back on the bench. I noticed that. Stop the short kick outs. Yeah, I noticed that there yesterday actually. Yeah. Strange. Um, um, Colin Kavanagh, I suppose, you know, I think he gets a bit more recognition now, but yeah. you know, outstanding again. I suppose when you when you take a lot of the players that we we spoke of yeah. on camera scoring. A good bit, yes. Even Hampsey getting man of the match in two points. Yeah. Colin Cavan outstanding. He's, yeah, he's perfected yeah. that role now at this stage, hasn't yeah. he? Like you know, really his feeling and the yeah, his his strength and his turnovers that he gets yeah. within that area. Any high any high ball going into yeah. the area as well, he's claiming or he's getting rid of it or he's you know protecting the keeper. You know, he's doing everything that you need. Yeah, for that, yeah. I don't think he got on the score sheet yesterday, but I think he would probably be my man of the match yesterday. Mm. I thought that he was yeah, he, he was top draw. Like. Because the first time in in a while where um, we we've kind of said we'd thrown like you know they've been brilliant for thirty five minutes. Then we say the next half you know would has been they've never had a full set. This first full seven and they were outrageously impressive but the one thing about them that we kind of said about their forward play and is that how well they took their points yesterday mm, yeah. Jesus Christ they were as clinical as I've seen them in a the long long time yeah, yeah. I mean like you know it wasn't just tap over there you're talking points from 35 40 metres yeah. they've done a they didn't want to press them they were like going ahead shoot these boys can't shoot yeah, 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 yeah. they showed what, what happened it's a strange enough tactic because they're thrown inside line being predominantly just one man inside mm-hmm. a lot of the time you know Donegal le- leaving players like Matty Donnelly and um, Sludden to shoot from 30 and 40 yards yeah. is another very impressive the fools are like, yes. that, like, those, those lads can shoot and they've, they they've proven it you know um, but going by going kind of like after the game listening to Rory after the match like you know obviously that wasn't his game plan that's not what he wanted his players to do yeah, you know, well, it, the kind of same he was take, very honest he was very honest in, 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 in what he was saying but you know you kind of wonder how the team would go off the script yeah. that, that much as yeah. such. You know? But another big... Kind of slightly changed up uh, tactic of the manager to actually, you know, say, oh, it was my ball, I got it wrong. Yeah. Uh, so protect the players. <laughs> another so big 18 and 19 year olds out there and that's not what I told you. This, <laughs> yeah. so. But another big, another big defeat. Um, mm. You know, one of Donny Gosling's famous sons used to, when the teams would be getting beaten by 9, 10 points, he'd be calling for a B championship. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Donny Gosling probably aren't quite at that level yet, but... It's gonna really rock them. Yeah, I think so. Like, uh, it's tough, tough enough. Uh, well, they've, they've got uh, Longford now, who beat Monaghan last year, taking a few scalps in their time, you know. And I would still expect Donegal to get over that, but it's a tough side of the draw mm-hmm. to come out of because you've got me, you've got Mayo, and um, you know, it, it, it'll it'll be it'll ask a few questions of these younger players, especially like it was the the inexperience was what was 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 tipping it over towards Tyrone. For me, but I think um, even the experienced players yesterday were found wanting, so it'll be worrying enough for them, like you know. Well, they're they're showed, they're showed up a lot, you know. Like, I mean, they were badly caught out. They're bullied. Yeah, they're, they're, they're bullied yesterday. They're, 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 they're for they're every every department of the yeah, store, you know. I think possibly the, the the league performance may have uh, played in Thrones' favour yesterday, like. Like bigger know, pitch too, I suppose. Don't know, know, bigger, yeah. bigger pitch for going into the conditions again as well. The match, in yeah. fairness, and value for yeah. that day yeah. was, was treacherous. Like, so, was, you know, but at the same time, we were saying Thrones' defensive game is probably the best in yeah. in Ireland yeah. at the minute. So it is, you know, yeah. they're so hard to penetrate, you know, and yeah. getting through for goals. Like, I know they got one yesterday, which was a oh, ricochet yeah. that came back mm. to McBrady, you know, but... And that this fairness, the game was up at that oh, stage. Really but probably probably putting yeah. in as much effort, like. But and look, worth a mention as well. The man in the middle, uh, golf was fantastic. The was fantastic. Yeah, but yeah. again, like you said before the show, like it wasn't as niggly or as you know aggressive yeah. or intense as what we're expecting. But maybe that was down to him as well. Yeah. The way he reft it and he, he was letting yeah. go. But, you he's know, very good. Very. He's, yeah. he's one of the best in the. Actually, the a clip from the umpire as well. Yes, yeah, uh, that was with Mark. Bradley, yeah. How like the comment in relation to that today? You know, uh, was it or was it not? With Hearts obviously not a fan of the, oh, no, the black card. We're going to start giving out black cards out there. I mean, mm. it's, it's, it's back to we, we've said that there's just probably needs to be a wee redress of that rule because there's things that should definitely be getting black cards. Yeah, that, yeah. You know, by the, by, the, by the letter of the law, they're not yeah. a black card, and there's things that, like for, for example, um, 
the big fella for Galway last week as well, getting a black card for Kenny O'Connor running straight Jeez. into him. You know, the referee has to take stock in his own mind and say, what, what did he do there to deserve a black card before he mm. actually gives him the black card? You know? Is that a game we said this uh, is to help from the, the nation? Yeah, well, so I, suppose, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. I, I don't think yeah. in terms of the players they should be getting too involved no, unless it's no. striking or something like that. Yeah. You know, for something ministry yeah. like what happened with Bradley, I think they should be yeah. kind of... Yeah. Yeah. Go back to what Barry was saying on systems, I think that we were, we were talking about this before as well, like the throne, we, you know, we criticise our system at times for being defensive, but at the same time it is a fairly clearly defined system and I think Possibly it was something the problem problem that Meath had as well is that Kildare's system was that mm. we bit better and it's we bit more defined, yeah. you know. And would hope that the 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 attacking kind of more open play of the like of Meath and Donegal will come to in the next, Four. you know, when they hone that system. But the defensive systems are still on top and on top. Uh, this weekend anyway, yeah, you know. Okay. Well, look, uh, so throw March on from and down this week, but. Yeah. Uh, you know, it could be another another good Ulster final. Okay, just in the qualifiers then, Sligo 22 points, Antrim 3-7. Bit of controversy here with an extra sub for yeah, Sligo. Yeah, I think that uh, Antrim have got uh, Joe Bally back on the case for them there. Again, and, yeah. uh, he's uh, he's uh, counting up, uh, like, you know, rigorously counting subs, you know, and he thinks he's got seven, but I think that the rest of them have got maybe six and a blood sub. It looks like it's not going to go nah, on. Nah, no, so. Today, so Wicklow... Wicklow with a couple of late goals to give Leash a bit of a scare, but Leash came out on top yeah. as we probably expected. Yeah, I would have expected that all right. Yeah, Leash yeah. are, are a bit of are, are a step ahead of, of, of Wicklow really, really. Yes. Uh, yeah. John, John Wicklow was a very disappointing season for Wicklow overall. Like they had a, 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 an abysmal league campaign and, and two defeats. Yeah, yeah. Leash are three up after 15 minutes. Like. Yeah, yeah, the the control issue, they're, 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 they're ten up at one stage to the world, and it was a case of um, just put off the pedal and then mm-hmm. those two late goals took the shine of it like, but you know I yeah. suppose it kind of keeps them on their toes as well needing yeah. to improve for the next day like for, for counties I suppose like like, like Wicklow like it's, it's hard it's hard to face into that again now you know like next year again like you know it's it such a disappointing you know Auckland which used to be their fortress and yeah. it's kind of fallen away a wee bit now and they, they were a team the four scalp in the qualifiers and it's disappointing you know this year for them now. and then Derry 117 the water was 13 points at Derry went Deep south and came away with the victory. Yeah, well, there you've got a good enough record in the qualifiers, and yeah. they, they'll uh, they'll be definitely uh, licking their lips with getting down yeah. the Castle Bar to play Mayo. Yeah. The one thing I found with the qualifiers is it's better to get 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 it get a tough game. You know, you know, you don't want to like Waterford in Waterford was no by no means you know a game here or that there, especially after what they you know the game they had against Cork. Yeah. But you don't want to. Tip along with too many easy games and then come a cropper against some quality. Like yeah, yeah. they're even looking for a test. Yeah. And uh, Mayo win uh, Castle Bar is, is a brilliant draw for them, I think, and that should make for a good match. Yeah. Good. Up front, a lot to tighten up. Derry had registered 16 ways yeah. in the game yesterday. Yeah. And when you look at Tyrone and you look at Derry. Uh, no, near yeah. the end of that game, the Waterford game, they were, they were taking a lot of hot shots and kind of, you know, yeah. when the game was up, they were just kind of yeah. hoping yeah. Defensively, yeah. Derry have got the personnel there to, 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 to oh. kind of wrap up a few of the Mayo forwards. and. Mayo with their you know kind of more defensive system this year. I think uh, the Damian Barton have them um, and definitely up yeah. for the challenge. Now, so we'll Hopefully you can get all the all the lads to stop playing club football for a week or two. Sometimes they don't even play it up. Loud and Longford, for the Leinster derby. Really disappointing. Loud one ten, long for two fifteen. Yeah. Really disappointing end for Loud. It's just, yeah. it's just uh, listening to Colin Kelly after the after the game and like he, he's resigned from his manager position now. But like he said himself, you know, coming into the league, they'd done a serious amount of work, you know, fitness ways and with the regime, with the, they had the one promotion out of Division Three, like and it's you know yeah. it's it's it's, it's happened. It seems to happen quite a lot with teams. You know, they, they take the league into such a serious yeah, yeah, yeah. mindset. Then it kind of comes to the team championship. Yeah, you're, yeah. you're run out. You're you're burnt out. Like yeah. and you just don't. You lose that bit of focus and a wee bit of intensity. Like yeah. and he, he even said it himself. He didn't. He felt like he didn't have the same players as what he did prior to the championship in terms yeah. of the intensity that they were offering the training yeah. and. You know, obviously, uh, he's taking them as far as he can. You know, which is fair play. Back, back to back to division two, back to back promotions. Yeah, but you know, I suppose with the way they had went in the league, they would have been looking to get a wee bit longer. Yeah, the championship. I think you were you were looking for them to get a bit longer as well. No, nah, not too sure. Hey, no, 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 I said I said later they were going. Uh, like they I didn't say no. I no, thought they were your surprise package for the championship. Yeah, another bad call. What? That they were going to be what? Win what? Surprise package for the championship. It's a big consistency one. 
<laughs> yeah, why don't we consistently uh, bury well, it? Well, they they're in a provincial final. At least you're consistent. Oh, uh, right, yeah, right. <laughs> She's saying goodbye, dude. Really, I mean, <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll argue <laughs> off camera, but I think Marty's in a strong position. Uh, All right, um, so, so that's that's the wrap up of the weekend. Then <laughs> we are uh, okay, folks. We're going to play a clip of our next guest, Rome star Rona McNabb. Take a look at him in action, and he'll be back joining us on the sofa. Rona McNabb. Looking inside, not too much movement. So they'll have to work it in. They still have it. That's a very good run for McNabb. And that's one of the scores of the day. Well, there was nothing on. And Rona McNabb just put his head down, brushed off a couple of challenges, and fired over an inspirational point to give Tyrone a two point lead. Wonderful score from the wing back. Okay, so Rona McNabb in action. Rona, welcome to the sofa. Cheers, thank you. Good to, good to have you in. Uh, we'll start with, on a positive note, a good win yesterday for your boys. Yeah, it was a good win. No, I think everybody kind of played well and stood up to the plate. Um, I suppose Donegal would probably be kicking themselves. I thought, even in the warm up, they looked a wee bit lethargic. You know, I don't think they're as bad a team as that. Mm -hmm. um, as boys had said earlier, I think there will be a serious threat in the qualifiers. And, you know, if we were to meet them again, I'd say it'll be a tighter affair. A different game, I, I suppose that's interesting what you say about the, the warm up. Personally, you, you're struggling with the ankle a bit, is that right? Yeah, I went up with the ankle there uh, two weekends ago, playing a club game there. So hopefully, from the next two weeks ago, or two weeks, take time will be back training and hopefully in consideration for the, the panel, not the final, but a bit of work to do yet. There's a lot of, uh, there's a serious amount of competition in that in that team at the minute. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You're probably one of those men that is around knocking about the middle third, half forward, half back, where there's plenty of competitions, is that fair to say? Yeah, there's serious competition. Like you look at the likes of Rory Brennan and Connor Myler, you know, that probably didn't start and started against Derry, so definitely it's, it's all about, you know, just getting yourself fit and getting yourself back in the training and putting your hand up and hopefully Mickey gives you the shout, but uh, serious competition, like and it has been like that this last two or three years, you know, so mm -hmm. nobody takes nothing for granted and you know, probably showed a wee bit yesterday that you know you the likes of Polly Hamsey, Kieran McGeary and boys like that that really stood up to the plate that, you know, probably started the first championship game against Derry uh, and their second game and looked like season campaigners yesterday. Mm -hmm. Very much so, Hamsey the man of the match performance. Jib, uh, anything for Ronan on, on social media or anything to tell us? Well we have a question in Ronan, um, just when you're on about your position there, what is your favourite position? Um, I suppose my favourite position would probably be centre half back or, or midfield. Like I always played midfield when I was younger, but ever since I came to senior, like it was half back or half forward. Like and yeah. tend to just enjoy in around the middle. Like I don't like being stuck in the corner, <laughs> but sometimes I'll be, be put in there. Like I've just played full back for the club last year in the league final. Kind of did enjoy it because you're just given the task, but. Um, no, I prefer to be out around the middle or uh, half back. back. He's not a nice place to be. Yeah. Oh, definitely yeah. not. Definitely not. not. <coughs> nice to be. Um, yeah, very good. Well, I suppose you talk about the, since you've joined the senior panel or the Throne senior panel since, what, 2010? Yeah. So seven years. A, a right stint at this stage. Uh, 2008, you were the All-Ireland champions um, with Peter Hart, Matty Donnelly, uh, Kyle Coney, a good team. Tell us a bit about that season. Yeah, it was probably... Similar enough for me, like I started off being injured, I got an operation on the ground, but um, no, I remember we played down in the first round and it was scary stuff, like, uh, we, were, we were getting bait, like, but the boys, I think Kieran Gervin made a score of goal, came on at half time, scored a goal, um, went on then and won Ulster, like, I think we beat um, Cavan in the final, and subsequently after that, Cavan would have beat us in a couple of under 21 finals as well, so it was a tough run out of Ulster, so it was, uh, progressed then, we played uh, Ross Common. Uh, me from the all Ireland semi final and two Titanic games against uh, Mayo in the final. And thankfully, I was back and fit and fit the playing them last two games. I am. Um, I suppose that was a team with the no shame in that. Yeah. So I suppose you know nine ten years later, you are you are still doing battle. Yeah. Well, there was Kevin Keane. Funny, he was full, full back in that. He, he's played for Mayo. He's out with Crucia at the minute. Like so, um, you did no shame. You had a couple of others. A um, couple of boys actually has won or played for. Castle Bar and Mitchell's you know, still playing well as well. So definitely it was two good teams and uh, I think you know it 
Uh, Robbie Hanley, I don't like bringing it up, but he, he made a mistake in that final and Connor really Neal got in to score a goal and probably was the change in the game, you know, and we got lucky, like, but I think it was a great team, like, I remember playing under Shavon Haynes and Martin Key saying that uh, we played in some Ulster competition and he said that um, the pick of the rest of the teams in Ulster wouldn't have beat that thrown team, like, and yeah. a lot of boys would have gone on to play senior football and some boys have suffered with injuries and some boys have probably just very good club players at the minute, like, but definitely was a good team and good experience. It was, yeah. And I mean, you talk about injuries there. You've you probably did your fair share. Yeah, I've had a bad run of luck now. Like ever since I was about eighteen, like I've had nearly everything. But mm. someday I'm gonna get a run and <laughs> stay away from me for a while, like. But you make it no, it's, months, it was. it's frustrating, like, but sure, that's part of the sport, like. That's it. Uh, by day, you're a quantity surveyor. Yeah. Um, I suppose to give us a give the folks at home and ourselves a feel of for an intercounty footballer with you know training and a work how does your how does your work begin from a monday to a sunday um well, i work for mclaren Hague and tomorrow like the instruction company like so it's pretty close to home like so and um, generally if you have a game on a sunday can i relax on monday or get into the pool or something thrown train on a tuesday and a thursday on the pitch maybe a gym session on a wednesday and the club normally trains on a Friday as well, like so I like to get down there and maybe get a gym session beforehand or something like that so we get down and show the face there. Um if you game on the Sunday obviously kinda of rest up, do a bit of foam rolling and stretching and stuff and try and get the right foods in there for the game on the Sunday and hopefully play well on the Sunday and right, yeah. start over again. And do you find I suppose you just say is is there much pressure on the gym work side of things for for yourselves to to get them fitted in? Uh, yeah, there is a collective gym session like and boys boys are very good at attending it like and I think it's a whole culture thing nowadays where even the people that aren't interested in playing football or that they're they're all you know ten sport and the amount of personal trainers that you see nowadays so it's a real culture thing it's not just GA players like if we weren't playing uh, Gaelic football or whatever most of us would be in the gym anyway keeping fit and looking after ourselves like so I think everybody is just health conscious at the minute and. People really enjoy the gym, and, like, and I have to say myself, like that, I really enjoy the structure, and I really enjoy the you, know, you have a good structure to your life, like, and your girlfriend might like it all the time, like, but <laughs> well, that's it. I mean, you get a period of time to play football and play for your club in your county, so try to make the most of it. Of course, yeah. I suppose you've laid out that week there, and it seems that you know maybe a Saturday's the only day that's free if there's no game. You, yeah. you probably treasure that, do you? Yeah, you do, and you don't like it's it's kind of like probably be thinking all week about the football like and you know when, when you do enjoy it and um, obviously if you, you have a free Saturday like you have to look after the ones that you know that you know the next year you're from that you have to maybe your fiance should call her now. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, it's you know you try to get away on a Saturday but it doesn't always work out like because if you're away with sometimes with when you're with Throne you're you're travelling or if you're in Dremore sometimes you know we'd have a meeting the night of, on a Saturday evening and it is tough but um, it's hard to get a good balance between your social life and football, but I think when you're at this stage in your career, and you're probably in your late twenties and injuries racking up, like you're probably thinking, right, I need to make the most of it here for the next lot of years, and hope to get a few more medals and a few more big days out. You speak of medals. Would you? Uh, sorry, would you mm-hmm. roll back a wee bit then? Whenever you you get, you know say if Tyrone get put out of that there, would you roll back a bit or would you? Keep it going solid when you're with Tremor. Would you be keeping up two, or three gym sessions a week, even if you don't have the that amount of train, training sessions on the pitch? No, like uh, I think Tremor, we have a good enough culture at the moment as well with the gym. Yeah. So you have boys like I know Rice was on a couple of weeks ago, like, and he he keeps the boys in shape and dragging boys to the gym and stuff like. So no, I, you'd keep it going like with the club. Uh-huh. But I think it's important to do that as well because some people have this. Uh, I don't know what you'd say, like people think that just on oh, your county player, like oh, all he cares about is the county and he, he's looking mm-hmm. after himself, like but yeah. you know, from what I can see in the throne throne panel, like everybody puts in as much effort for the club. For the club well, and uh, yeah. I think it's important to show the boys that whenever you're put out yeah. whenever the throne season finishes that you know your heart's in the right place and that yeah. you you really want your club to do well and as well. The club uh, would have a good uh, culture of, of, of gym sessions and that as well. Yeah, so. definitely like you know, WhatsApp groups and all be well popular as every mm. like the boys looking after themselves and getting the gym done and some boys don't like p- posting pictures of themselves in the gym and uh, but you know they're in the gym you know that kind of way yeah, like, so yeah. um, it's good like I think 
Do you have a rule you have to put up the pictures? Do you? No, or not really. Like you don't have a rule, but somebody's uh, just if you're not if you're not starting, like for example, in a couple of weeks, I'll be posting pictures flat out. With the thumb, right? So I don't know, is that like curling up one hand and get the get the camera out with the other hand? Uh, the there's an expert at the end of the sofa there at that. <laughs> not on the sofa. <laughs> but um, you're talking about Silver over there. Uh, I suppose you're involved in 2010. You know, last year, obviously, you win Division 2 and then <coughs> win in Ulster. Was there a fear, you know, within that group, maybe not spoken about, but was there a fear in your head that you know, the silverware wasn't going to come again? Or no, I think um, like, sometimes you'd be get a wee bit worried about the silverware not coming, but I think there was a good enough belief. I think after 2015, boys really believed that we could push on as a team. Um, obviously, Getting over Donegal was a, a massive thing last year, and getting lost at Hegel was a very it was a good confidence boost. Like, but I think boys are well grounded. Like, and you know, I'm sure Jeb would know some of the Tarek boys, and you know, everybody's kind of their feet in the ground. Like, nobody's really saying you know we're all earning contenders or not. Like, we'd like the challenge, yes, but you no, know, we know we have to keep working hard, and mm. hopefully there's a wee bit more silverware for us to lift. But um, no, it's, sometimes you do panic, especially when you're out injured, and you'd be thinking. You know, you might get back for for all the fans and yeah. stuff like so. It's tough, but that's the way you want it. I suppose. Yeah, so generally, with C in terms of speaking about you know, just getting the medals and all that there in championships, whenever Jews as a as a team start year, Jews set a, a firm goal as and where you want to get in the end of the year, what is would be national league, whether it be an Ulster semi final all Ireland, would you set like a goals each along the way, or what way do you just kind of <coughs> prepare, or would uh-huh. you do that something individually, or? Like I think everybody has their own individual targets. Like if you don't, you know, I think there's something wrong. Like if you're a club player, you want to be in the first fifteen, or you know, or you want to be playing reserves, or it's the same with the boys in the room. Like there's boys there that, you know, they want to be in the twenty sixth and match day, and there's boys there that want to be in the first fifteen, and there's boys that just know that you know their limits and that they want to come on and have a good impact as a sub. Like and obviously any of the boys like uh, suppose like the Matty Donnies and the Petey Hearts and the Calvin Cairns and the Ed Sluddens that are probably thinking, you know, of Get them on a match awards and maybe perform getting eight or ten performances in big days and maybe all stars like you don't know but with throwing like Mickey Hart probably states it you know in the way we treat every game is to win it like yeah. and we don't mm-hmm. really look beyond any too far in the future you know, like just take one game at a time just yeah, yeah. And the media as well like it's something that kind of you don't really pay much attention to because you know media can say one thing like and a lot of people tipped on a goal to be thrown and you know we seen yesterday that kind of maybe didn't work in their yeah. favour because the Donegal past players I found that I thought, you know, they were putting a lot of pressure on this current Donegal team. You'd like to see Kevin Casty saying that they're going to win easy and then McGee and these boys. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, for me, I thought yeah. after the way the game went in Bally Buffet, I thought there was a lot of pressure yeah. in that Donegal uh, team. Especially when it's such young a young team as well. Yeah. Yeah. There'll, there'll probably be a lot of talk now, I suppose you're saying you don't really pay much attention to, to Throne or to the media. There'll be a lot of talk now, especially given the, 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 the performance yesterday, that Throne would be the next team. We're talking the top three yeah. in, in the country here. And I'm sure there's a lot of people that have mentioned Throne as being the, 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 the team to, to challenge the, the Dublin and Kerry. I suppose, um, like what, what, way do you, what way do you deal with that as a, as a team? Do you, does it ever come up or is it just an, an unspoken thing? Or? It's, it's kind of, well, I think uh, Mickey is very good at you know, keeping things cool and calm. You know, like we don't really talk about the top three, yeah. obviously we, we talk about challenging them and, and getting over them, you know, but do we, do we class ourselves as a, a top three or top two, top four team, like, you're not in a way, you, 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 you're sparing for that, yeah, there, you know, yeah. but I'm telling you, you go up to Pro Park and you beat a Mayo or Dublin or Kerry, mm-hmm. um, you know, you've, you've obviously Mon and Donegal and that as well, and a couple of other teams, like, until you actually beat them in Pro Park, yeah. which, you know, we really haven't done, maybe, as this current group, yeah, yeah, you can't really say that. Like mm-hmm. so, um, no. Hopefully, this could be the year that we take a big scalp, like, and yeah. then we can start. Yeah, yeah. Like it's definitely looking that the, way. The media always change, even people's opinions. Even here the night, I mean, start off. Kieran McGorman watching for Philadelphia, top three teams just Troon, Kerry, and Dublin. She hasn't got them in that order though. She was um, we have. Is that your order, then, Jim? Is it? Oh, <laughs> she and McMahon, uh, Dublin, Kerry, Troon. But he's tipped Monaghan to win Ulster. I don't know if that works, Shane, but let us know. That's a strange one. Good one, Logan. Um, Kieran O'Doherty, he's just been chatting about the Sligo match and the Antrim game, so 
Been skipped out there too. Um, yeah. What about Mark, uh, Mark Gallagher thrown to win Ulster and also to make the All Ireland final? I think Dublin Kerry thrown the top three teams in Ireland at the minute. So it, everybody is picking thrown. Yeah. And the was that last week there was a lot of doubts maybe over over whether or not thrown would be able to beat uh, Donegal, which is. I suppose it is a weekly thing. Like for last week, I was saying that we were going to be Kildare, and now this week, I'm saying that they're, yeah. they're brutal. <laughs> I think it's important to like the likes of Mayo. Like you just can't rule them out because no, you know, like they've been on the road a long time. Mm-hmm. Like and just coming in, you know, against Galway and semi final O'Connor Ch- Championship, they can just be floating their boat at the moment. Yeah. I mean, it's hard for them to yeah. get up. Well, like it was a bit like last year, wasn't it? Everyone yeah. kind of said it may have been an Asian team and boys, you know, not performing yet. Yeah. yet and, and they were saying they kicked the ball, you know. Yeah, I suppose they played, they, played, they, they got to the match last week with, with 14 men. And nearly again. And nearly drawn it up, like, you know. Galway. Which I, they, they, like, definitely, and even we, we kind of wrote off Tony Gall as maybe, you know, being too inexperienced in that, but... They they still they still can put a run together and if they if they get their tails up again those those young fellas will be a force to be reckoned with. Yeah, there will be, 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 be a lot of there'll be a lot of pressure in the likes of McGlynn's, Murphy's, McGee, you know, to bring yeah. them young lads along now because they 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 have been there before, you know, and they know what it's like to have to go through this route where a lot of them younger lads who've had under twenty one championships, minor mm-hmm. championships may not have seen this before yeah. in these sort of scenarios. Of course. So and you take they took probably take inspiration from you seen Mayo last year. Well, that's it, like you probably know, put it up the Dublin as well as they ever have done the final, but yet, you know, you take them against Fermanagh and Castle Bar where they just about got by Fermanagh. Um, and like that through the qualifiers. And they got they had it and then had a tough game then against Kildare in the next round, which you know and again they got just progressively better and better. Yeah, and I yeah. suppose at the same time, you know, in, in terms of Donegal, you'd have to say yes, they realistically everything on the day went brilliant for Tyrone. There wasn't yeah. a player that played poorly. Um anyone who came on had an, had an impact in the game. They were yeah. clinical, their defence mm-hmm. was superb. And in terms of Donegal as you said earlier, Murphy was kind of swamped in midfield. So he was Brady he was the only person up forward who was making anything happen for them, just not consistently mm-hmm. enough. And then we said again, like you know, I suppose it's, it's this case is that you know in the second half they were they were chasing the game. I wouldn't say they went out of their system by any means. They weren't like yeah. flooding forward, but yet there was gaps. Mm-hmm. As you saw, Taylor yeah, McCann we, running through. He yeah. get by. He yeah. was go. He had the ball at the halfway line. All he had to do was go by Carl Lacey, who was on the forty-five, and he had a clean thirty meters to go in and goal. Mm-hmm. You know that's that's very much mm-hmm. on like Donny Gall. Like so, there, there obviously was a lot of things you said, uh, Rony, that they, they looked a bit lethargic, and it did show in the game. They had a couple of goal chances too. as oh, well. They did, yeah, 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 could have could have changed maybe. I don't think the Hughes well, was a massive. Yeah, I don't think it would have changed your ball. Like, but it would have maybe made it a bit tighter. You know. Yeah, they tried to play Murphy's injury down during the week. I don't think Murphy was right. You know, he, he wasn't moving at all hardly. He got a good point, but uh, yeah, yeah. Feel well yeah, we don't take away from Hobbs' good performance. But yeah, yeah. Well, that's it. I, I, I was watching Murphy in the the warm up, you know, and I, I would have picked him out. It's been a bit like they were playing a wee conditioned game, and every time he gave the ball away, like he, to be honest, he didn't look interested. Like it's not. Yeah. I'm sure he was, but maybe he was carrying. Like nobody knows. I know yeah. a couple of weeks ago mm-hmm. there was big reports that he had ah, had a bad knee injury. Or, or it kind of shows because it was what Neil McGee too, and he he came off injured. Well, we think he came off injured. Like and if probably well, there's the maybe something like, maybe. Yeah, that yeah. would have maybe knocked the confidence of the younger fellas as well. Yeah. Seeing the, the, those two stalwarts, you know, no one in yeah. the back of their head that maybe Michael Murphy wasn't right and McGee going off and. And maybe just a couple of turnovers uh, on on important players, important times, and the goal chances not going their way. You know, we would have played in there. And just we said they, they were momentum, the momentum huge yeah, as well. Yeah. Like after before half time, whenever I think they're on what five six points up, and then the start mm. of the second half they just ramped it up again. So the yeah. you know, momentum huge. Like yeah. and then it just showed then the second half throwing were superb. Just yeah, well, we game, talk, like, talked know. about it before as well with the the way throwing play. The when you're ahead and you have a cushion, Aye. like the system is. It's ten times better, you know, because you're you've got that cushion, and you know there's nothing there's nothing to force you out of out of your shape, and you know you've got the quality, and other teams possibly leaving you a bit more space, like so it just plays in your hands. The team that gets ahead early can can stay ahead so often and build up even bigger margins than we're used to seeing between two yeah. big teams, two yeah, close teams, you know. Yeah. Rub it. We have just a commentary uh, from Tiernan Raff. What's the difference in Dublin and Throne, seen as Dublin are fifteen v fifteen team? Throwing or short of an out and out forward, maybe, with a question mark. Um, I I would like I think the dub service defensive end. Mm-hmm. Like I watched yeah. them that night we played them in the league. Like and once the ball broke down at the taller, the kicker was out. Uh, Philly McMahon was straight back into the D and, and was a sweeper. Like and I think most teams are starting to play just go one sweeper instead of two. As far from what I can see this year, like mm-hmm. 
Um, to say that throwing Dublin go 15 against 15, I think that's I think that's the media. I think this is something yeah. in the media and people blowing up the Dubs to be like they're on their top class team, but mm-hmm. um, I definitely think they're, they're very good defensively. Throwing out forward, like throwing only sort of one free yesterday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, a, like I think that's I think that's a played a bit over the top. Yeah. Yeah. I know we did talk about it for a while as well, but they're they're proving us wrong. Yeah, well, like it, it, maybe you know. A, t- a tighter match, it may come, may come to the fore a bit more about you know yeah. playing Bradley and Zayl on his own. And I thought Bradley was not his name. So like two you, men on him, like. yeah, yeah, and his he movement is, is so good that he can, he can, he can occupy two men and still win ball out in front, you know. But a wee bit like uh, Hesley and, and Martin winning match with balls against Offaly, you know, up against two players that they won't do that against Dublin next week. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, Bradley possibly won't do that against uh, the like of uh, the Dublin cornerbacks, you know. And even against um, the uh, Wileys and the Wileys Monaghan, and, uh, yeah. if Monaghan get there, you know. So but look at, I mean, that sets it up, and ho- look, Rony, hopefully you're, you're back for that game. Just to, um, to finish up with a couple of questions now, not that you would want to replace any of the current throwing squad, but if you could bring back uh, one, one throwing legend to play alongside in the team at present, who would that be? Probably want to be bringing back uh, Peter Canavan, like, just to get playing alongside him, like. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Have you played yeah. much against them? Never. Like I, no. I used to play my first game for the more seniors two thousand seven. I think he retired two thousand six. Uh-huh. So uh, it would have been nice to just to see how he behaved, you know. And I heard he was a bit of a joker, like so, and um, it was good crack, like. Whereas whenever you're younger, looking up at him, you probably think he's just this real straight laced mm-hmm. guy who yeah. doesn't drink, doesn't smoke, and just practices football all the time. Uh-huh. But, uh, Apparently that wasn't the case. No, it was it was a bit late, even for the fact. He tried to toss me one day in front of the stand in Madagascar. But from what I was hoping away. Actually, too boy. He wasn't watching it, nothing. But hey, just chatting about players coming back. There's a good comment here. Um, would Conor McKenna be the difference in throne being in the top three? Maybe. It's Conor McKenna, Conor McKenna, Conor McKenna, McKenna Australia. Australia. Yeah. And, and doing very well. It's absolutely flying in Australia. Like I've actually been watching a couple of clips of him, like um, speed and pace and power. Like he, he's definitely a supreme athlete. Like and his brother Janet and Ren were nice. really athletic lads as well. Like um, Conor obviously was in the county setup in two thousand fourteen. Like and he would have been a big loss, and like he probably wouldn't have been happy that he went away. Yeah, but you always um, mind Angus um, McKenna's interview where they were chatting about. The McKenna household being in the uh-huh. team and they asked him but the, who's the better player he says Connor yeah. him not on the panel at the time like. yeah. he always yeah. said he was the best McKenna footballer oh, he definitely would uh, fit in perfectly with, with the current team Just like he was um, probably he'd be a like for like for Sean Cavan maybe it's, it's hard to know like I know he came on or he played the All Ireland Minor final uh, must have been say he's not he's yeah. mm-hmm. yeah. and uh, he just no, he kept throwing in it like he was like he just looked like a ready made senior footballer like obviously you know he could come back in the next few years we wish him the best of luck but I mean not too many you know, a lot lately you know a lot going on but you know it's yeah. a bit of a bit of like I think Thomas Mouché was having a bit of a jay with uh, Ty Kennelly maybe yeah. for, 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 for punching there yeah. Yeah. Which I think that maybe just because there's been a few carry lads going oh, now yeah, in, the, yeah. in the last few years but it's it's definitely a blow like and I suppose with, with Tyrone or, or Kerry you know there's there is does seem to be great minor teams coming up all the time and, and the, the the scouts probably know to look yeah, out no, for sure. those teams like but well, well, Conor McKenna did do last week that they said to him what do you do during the week and all and he said there's 12 young Irish boys in Melbourne like mm-hmm. if the AFL teams they all go out together every week for a pint and a feed in 12 of them you're a professional athlete out for what? a pint you wouldn't mind it um, ok look we, we look ahead then to, to next week uh, Limerick take on Wexford in Limerick Marty how do you see that one going uh, I think Wexford Wexford might turn it on here they've, they've kind of really plummeted since this great start to the league they were the first team promoted looked like uh, Banty McEnany uh, was weaving magic down there and that the uh, Wexford herders and the uh, Wexford footballers were both going to win the Leinster but uh, it just all went to pot then and uh, they got promoted alright but they lost the Division 4 final disappointingly and then a very disappointing defeat to uh, Carlo was it in the first round mm-hmm. but I think I, I would think that they're, they maybe might turn it on now and, and, and put Limerick to the sword although it's in Limerick it'll be yeah. 
probably be a tight match, but a, a fancy, fancy, fancy yeah, Wexford. Yeah. Barry, love you. scared next. to make anything anymore. <laughs> Sorry to say, but yeah. <laughs> you're, only, you're only highlighting your bad uh, calls. Yeah, like that, that's fair enough. Like, you're you're an expert in teams team. going to London when they should be winning. So, uh, <laughs> London, <laughs> London at home to Carlo and I slip. That hey, hey, I'd have to give confidence a shot. I'd have to ask <laughs> confidence is never shot. Hey, lost there. Um, I'd have to get uh, Carlo the nod on that one. Hey, just because um, I think they'll come in with a lot of confidence from the Dublin game. You know, going by all reports, they put it up them for like you know, good forty minutes or so in that game and a lot of intensity. And I think because they had that game, it's going to stand at them a lot against the Lakes of London. You know, who lost out the Leitrim. Um, so uh, I'd have to get Carlo the nod for that. Well, uh, Ronan. Cavan travelled to Offaly. Where do you see this Cavan team at the minute? I think uh, like obviously we played them last year, like in, a, in the Alliance League final as well, and then they drew with them and lost their championship. And I think they've a lot of good young players come as well, like the likes of Gerald McKiernan and obviously with Cian Mackey and McFeedy and these boys. Like I think Cavan are definitely a serious outfit. Like I suppose. Um, the likes of Shawnee Johnson is up there as well. They are a formidable team. I think they probably will take a big scalp within the next year or two. But yeah. um, they should they should overcome awfully like, and give the qualifiers a good rattle. I suppose you know I wouldn't be surprised to see them progressing maybe to the quarterfinals or in around that. I think that'd be Matty McGlean's uh, outcome this year. Would be looking to get to a quarter final with that Cavan yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. Um, um, getting a good draw. Yeah, obviously. Yeah. Yeah. They look the draw, like, but I think they're definitely an upcoming team. Like, with the right. I mean, under twenty one championships, they've won yeah. the last number of years. Like, and to be fair to them, like you know, they they I don't know if they, they played the right system as such whenever they could be it there and also like yeah. because they're playing a lot of long ball in. You know, the mm. Groden Groden's a better player coming out onto the ball mm. and things yeah. like that. There probably just didn't suit the way they played. And I suppose Maddie looking at that and it's still the first it. last to draw. You like. Don't think any team would want would want to draw yeah. Calvin. Like no, any no. any team that gets knocked out at the next stage will we'll, we'll, we'll definitely. See, not you want think to they're, Calvin, they're really Calvin as well. The, the Calvin's always hungry. Like you know, yeah. later on, you know, there's a lot of you know teams you know that could come in after losing and in their provincial and you know they could be down and downhearted and all that. Their Calvin never seems to be like that. Their Calvin always seems to be just yeah. just mad to get out of the game, you know, and I, I do think I'd honestly can't see Calvin getting to at least quarter final this year. Yeah, again, it's all depending. Like. Yeah. Okay, um, Ulster Derby, we might ask the throne men to just dismiss <laughs> from Anna Travel to Armagh. We have to go to Armagh on a Sunday evening, which I don't think everyone's too happy about, but anyway, it's a strange time for a fixture. But, uh, Ronan, how do you see that going? Be careful now. Uh, I'll have to be <laughs> seriously careful here. I have relations in Fermanagh, so. Yeah. Um, uh, Ryan and Rory Foy there, you'd probably oh, all know. Oh, yeah. Good last. Enjoy the crack there, like, so, um, no, I probably, you know, for Mana, I've always they've been going right there this last couple of years, like, and probably disappointed uh, with recent results, but it should be a sting in their tail, like, and um, Armad would be the same, like, uh, they'd be hoping to put on a better show as well, but, um, I'm not making any, I'll try to sit in the fence here, but I'll, I'll go for Fermanagh. Jamie, you'll not be afraid no. of me, what's your tennis, no. what do you think? I usually don't, but I actually do think Fermanagh will win this weekend. Really? I just, I think our man were, I just thought they were chaotic, think it's down. Yeah, there was a lot yeah. of, there was a lot of, oh, watching uh, the, the RT coverage of that Armagh uh, down match was, you think that Armagh had, had reinvented football and were playing the best football you've ever seen, you know? Yeah. You know, they scored two goals, Grant, but, you know, down kicked maybe nine points into a stiff breeze and there wasn't a word about it, but whereas Arma maybe put, put together a, a couple of good fist passes and got a, go, got a couple of goals and you'd think that uh, Kieran McGinney had uh, had reinvented football, but yeah. um, I, I think it'll be tough. Well, we rumour, Marty, that out. rumours, I suppose, that the, the, the Framan are quite depleted numbers ways. Um, this is it's, it's, it's something you, you suffer with. Um, Probably smaller county and, and 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 different things come into play, especially you know around this time. There's a big draw to for for fellas to you know fringe squad members or maybe more than fringe squad members heading off to to the states and that there on injuries and different things. But from Anna and, and Arma have met uh, probably three times in the last couple of years uh, in the leagues, and it's, it's been close. I think uh, Arma won won well in the league final a couple of years ago, but uh, it was a one point win with a last minute point. Uh, uh, the last time they met in the league, and it was a draw the year before that in the league. So, I fancy it to be a tough, 
uh, tight, close, close match. But I think I think the Fermanagh have enough there to, to see through there and, and okay. progress the next round. I think Fermanagh's runners, the run up players, will get them through it. Yeah. And a big header will come. Uh, Our man will probably be looking at like this Stephen Campbell and yeah. Jamie Clark to step up yeah. the last day because Rory Bruggen as well. Like they were, like yeah. it was kind of well documented that you know they weren't happy with their performances. Like mm-hmm. and if there's anything behind them at all, they'd be looking yeah, to well, step the, up the There was a lot of talk and uh, Stevie McDonald was in here as well and I heard, heard people talking uh, about it about the great forward line now and there is like there is serious quality in that forward line mm-hmm. and. Yeah. You know, it's one thing to model will have to be wary of because they, you know, although they did show it in patches against Down, the second half display against Down was abysmal. Like, and um, I think that you know, from on uh, defensively, will hopefully be able to to, to crowd them out, and uh, up front, uh, from on will will give will give that Armagh defence a, a bit of trouble. I think. Okay. Make a wreck for McGinney too. If I think so. Yeah, yeah, I think so goodbye. because um, not getting promoted would be a, a serious blow to them. You know. Um, Although I'm not too sure they'll be they'll be that quick to get rid of him, but it'll be a lot of pressure on because I think there's a lot of people saying that he is doing good things. In fairness, I was you know I was saying he's reinventing football. I was being a bit over the top there. Maybe you know that he is trying to implement a, a system of play there, but it's just taking a long time. Yeah. So you're all back in Fermanagh. Well, the bookies are your friends if if you want to back them because they're the right place. But yeah. anyway, um, Monaghan and down then the Ulster semi final. Ronan, you'll be keeping the tight eye in this one. Mm-hmm. Where do you see it going? Yeah, like you'd have to strongly fancy Monaghan. Um, like they've obviously some of the best footballers in Ulster, if not Ireland. Like the Kieran Hughes, you know the Whiteys, um, Colin Walsh and uh, Conor McManus, uh, and obviously Jack McCarron is starting to, to show for them as well. And then the few lads that are the best off, keeper in Ireland too. Yeah, yeah. Um, coming in off the bench as well. Uh, there are good lads like Owen Duffy. Come on, I think. Uh, he scored four points the last day, as man of the match, and you know he, he didn't start the first round of the championship yeah, against for man, you know. Yeah. So they are they are very mm-hmm. th- and McCarthy as well. They are very strong, like and the for real like I know Ryan Porter well. He was with Tremor, like and you know he'll be switched on kind of a fella as well, yeah. like and he's a great trainer, like so. Um, you'd have to fancy fa- fancy man, like fancy down have probably been struggling this last couple of years, like you know if they get a run on you, you know they can always. Use a shock, you know, but I think uh, Monon will have too much for them, like up front. So Barry, well, you know, Down and Ron says they've been struggling. I mean, Down beat Armagh. Down seemed to be in that game, you didn't have a set free taker from the left hand side, I didn't think. A bit wasteful. I think they were possibly talked up after the game a lot more than. Than, than they played well against Armagh, is that fair to say? Um, yeah, well I suppose with, with it being such a derby game, I, I know with, with Down they changed a couple of things compared to whenever we played them in the league. Uh, the likes of Dara Hannan came in wing half-back and Caelan Mooney's now been switched to half-back as well, which gives them quite a bit of drive from that area. Like, and I suppose they have uh, Dr- Jerome and Rain Johnson back in the starting team as well, um, you know, two fantastic footballers as well. But I suppose in, in when I've watched that match against RMA especially, like you could see that they're off, off for, they're hunting packs and whenever they, they get the turnover, like you know, they were I know it's small thing so it is like but they were they were roaring at each other, cheering each other on for just a turnover and then you could see in RMA was kind of just getting smaller themselves and yeah. down were just kind of pushing on mm-hmm. and it was like both both teams. To be fair, were away. I feel like you know mm. Down had a lot of chances to kind of put the, the game to bed earlier than what they actually did. You know, um, and I suppose with with, with Armagh, they they were saying they were taking a lot of pot shots when the panic was on. You know, but Down, I suppose it kind of suits them the way people are talking about them. And you know they done well to solidate themselves in Division Two. To be fair, with the with the point at the end of the court game, you know that's got them the the draw down there, and then. Kind of went on, played well against Armagh. Like, is there a bit more fight in them than him? There is a lot more fight in them than what the media is saying about them, mm. without a doubt. Like, you know, I, I still think there's a wee bit of issues within the panel there and with management. Still, kind of, there's whispers about that there. There's a lot of boys not really in the ideal place at the minute, but I still I agree with Roni there. I just think Monin's well, well above them at the minute, you know, in terms of their personnel, especially with the likes you're saying, with the likes of Owen Duffy, Ray McNesby coming in the team. You know, boys are making a big impact when they're coming on. Conor McCarthy when he came on the last day, yeah. he scored two points straight when he came on. And I just think um, with the where Monon is at the minute, I think it's going to be, be a, a, a throw Monon final. Well, Jib, uh, have Monon have Monon been mentioned by any of the viewers in the top three? You know, based oh, on 
it's just fine. And it's been thrown Dublin and Kerry. Everybody thinks that there. Maybe until they break that duck of beating a big team and maybe you're throwing that in. Probably yeah. maybe Marty yeah. has them. Yeah. That's the that's the been the main thing for, for Monaghan. Um they took a they've beaten Tyrone uh, possibly maybe once in the last few years and two, twice they got up to Dublin in the quarterfinals mm -hmm. coming from one Ulster final and then Tyrone have beaten them and uh, that's been the real downfall of this Monaghan team you know they, they won the first Ulster championship since 1988 I think uh, which was a, a massive achievement for them and they've, they've won one since but they really the next level is uh, is a big day out in August and, uh, and a big result in August you know and uh, back do we kind of, be, I don't want to break my team down, but Monaghan, I think, will beat them too. But I think Monaghan be double figures. Be yeah, the only thing, thing is Monaghan will take, take their eye off the ball, maybe. And no, well, that's the dinosaur. Put all their eggs in one basket. Yeah. Uh, well, Monaghan were, throwing, were slow to get going against Fermanagh in the first match. And, um, you know, as you say, Calvin could have uh, could have got it, could have nicked the draw at the end of the, the match. But it just, just got that wee touch of class with McCarthy coming off the bench. The goal from McManus was was really what what set them yeah. apart. You know that they've got just that player that's a, a level above. You know it was just it was it was a small enough passage of play. You know it was a, it could have been an insignificant passage of play, but it was just quality of McManus to get the goal and and uh, just the, those wee things is what show what's seen them ahead of uh, Calvin and Fermanagh, and they probably have enough to see off down see as well. Yeah. Which make right. for It'll make for a very interesting yeah. ultra final. Yeah. It really does happen. It does happen, you know. Yeah. 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 Dublin West Meath. <laughs> Sorry, Dublin West Meath. Um, you'd hope that West Meath. Such a. Yeah. 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 Barry just, Barry just laughs. Yeah. I did not <laughs> laugh. Or Barry, there's no point in even saying. No, no, I hear not me. Yeah. Right, his view. I've seen uh, uh, one of the former West Meath players uh, tweeting last night that he's confident that he'd give them a. Give uh, Dublin a rattle, but I think that's all they'll give them. Like I don't, you know, if there's if, there, mm -hmm. if there's a couple of points in it at half time, um, and Dublin will probably pull away after a, in the second half. But I, I can't see, I can't see there being there'll be mm -hmm. more than five points in it. We think it's just going to be it. something similar to the last last couple of less fights they've had. Like it's been kind of tight and yeah, it's just up yeah. to half time, and then there's been always two or three points, and then just <laughs> gradually. It's tough. It, it has been tough on West Mead. You know, they they like they. they 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 had you know they they just played their natural way to a point and then they, they come up against Dublin and they just they kind of feel like they have to go back into their shell and defend mm. because they really do like you know mm. because they like, possibly don't have the personnel in their defence and then they're taken from their attack it's it's, an, it's it's a near impossible task the thing is the right team every year. Year. but the thing is if they do yeah. kind of play the way that they want to even if they did even if Dublin did allow them we bit of space. Full back lane to Dublin has compared to what they've been yeah. up against. You know, it's not the same. Like you know, there's going to be hands and there's going to be turnovers. Okay, so basically, you know, so basically. not going to score between fifty five this weekend. No. <laughs> no. No. So basically, Dublin, 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 Dublin. Yeah, Dublin. Dublin. So, yeah. Yeah. Just uh, I suppose uh, Jeremy Connolly now is uh, having a few weeks off. Yes. He's decided uh, that he's not going to appeal. It's just a big enough one now. Talk from going to Ireland. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Talk from going to Dublin. Oh, so well, we'll be happy. Imagine I'm having a stick. <laughs> nice <laughs> option to have. Fair point. Dublin the march on. All right. Um, look, folks, it's it's been a good show. Room, it's a uh, great, uh, great to have you in. Uh, we we just have a couple of questions right here before we go. Keep well, a few yeah, people happy here. Sorry, I have to everyone shouted as well here. So, uh, for all, hopefully, from Manago on a good run and throwing her obviously in the final. So. Everybody looking at bus. Dooley's bus hair is the oh. one for you. Dooley's, Dooley's bus, hair. bus hair. Yeah. Right. Are they on the Facebook there? Or are they? Oh, they're on the Facebook, so you just expect a good time of us. <laughs> <laughs> um, just a quick one for Kieran Dahar, just the usual GAA question. Um, your most difficult opponent career in minors on the 2 on seniors? Um, there's been a, quite a few, like. Uh, probably getting over the cruise yet. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, in terms of players, like, um, it's, there's been a lot of like, club football, like you always, you, you think, Playing county football, like you know, you it'll be yeah. it's a lot harder in club football, but I think generally when you go to play club football, like it's tricky, isn't it? It's there's boys there, and oh, like, right. there's a wee bit more tension on you, tension mm -hmm. on you, and whatever. Like, and I think every club game you go out, like, there's a lot of pressure mm -hmm. on you, and you probably put self pressure on you, like, so probably ah, you trying to play well and and being to the fore for the club is probably the toughest thing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. What do you think went really well yesterday? 
I think whenever we moved it uh, fast, you know, I think we really, you know, whenever we cut the solos out and, you know, we used Mark Bradley inside and boys coming off the shoulder, the likes of Tiernan McKenna and Niall Slugden, um, I think we just cut them to pieces. I think Donegal didn't help themselves by standing off a wee bit much, but, you know, maybe that was... It was refreshing to see the ball being kicked in from throwing. Yeah, I think it was really, really, really moving very quick then, that's it. Do you have um, one last one, because we're... we're Going well, in time here. Well, first, Seamus Hawkins looking an autograph for you as well. One yeah. uh, just the biggest messer on the throwing team? Uh, there's a couple like Mickey O'Neill from Clonoe, like would be big messer. He's always bit of crack. Ronnie McNamee, he's always shouting out obscene stuff. Uh, and then you've Darren McCurry, like he's just hyper all the time. <laughs> and he's running about in his pig caps and his fancy khaki lycra stuff. <laughs> and and a space boy, boy. Hey? Yeah. a space boy. McCurry? Oh, no, he's no space player. Like. <laughs> <laughs> he's the only man that has a little... Rafa's uh, loving you, friend. He's, uh, <laughs> he's, uh, oh, he's the only the person that works <laughs> outside an office in the team. Like. He's, he's a plumber like, and he's the best dressed when it comes to training. So, uh, <laughs> what does that tell you? Very good. Okay, like, well, thank, thanks for coming in. Um, wish you the best luck against Monaghan or down the other final. Best luck for the rest of the year with Tremor and Thrum. Uh, thanks for having, coming in to see us. Lads, another good show. Jim, yeah, thanks for all the social media interaction. No problem. You'll be thinking of the competition for the for the jersey. So what jersey is that again? That's St. Regina's. So keep an eye on social media on Facebook, Twitter and YouTube for, for James' competition for St. Yeah. Regina's. We'll release um, the details during the week. What yeah, we're gonna do. We will. Okay, folks, we're we're not here next week. Uh, a couple of lads on holidays, but we will be back the following week with a special guest. Keep an eye out, just stay on social media for that. Uh, from Roni and the boys and myself, have a good night.